If you could only have one lens, what lens would it be? Leave a comment below. What is up people, Dunna here, and today we are talking about my go-to all-around lens for the A6500, 6300, 6000, or any Sony E-mount camera. You guys seem to ask me this all the time, if I could only have one lens for my camera, what lens would it be? And I'm a big believer of building out your kit that you should have tools for different purposes. But it definitely got me thinking, if I was headed somewhere, if I was let's say going traveling and all I could bring was one camera and one lens, what lens would I bring? And that lens is the Sony 18 to 105 F4 G OSS lens. I've had this lens for just over a year now and it probably stays on my camera more than any other lens that I own. So I figure it's gotta be worth talking about. Now, like all my reviews, here's what we're gonna go through today. Some of the good things about this lens. Some of the not so good things and what you can do about them. Some of the uses for this lens. I'm gonna answer a whole bunch of your questions that you asked me over on Instagram. And of course, because it's never enough to just talk about it, I'm going to show you photos and videos so that you can see just how this thing performs. But before we head out and take a look at what this thing is capable of, I'd like to give a huge shout out to the sponsor for this video, Vital House. This is the Vital House Athlete Shake. It's a 400 calorie meal replacement shake that has 32 grams of protein in it. I've been drinking these for about a month, one a day, and in my busy life, it's amazing to have something that I can just grab, fill up with water, shake it up, and have a full meal. It's extremely convenient and really healthy too. It's filled with natural ingredients, it's got tons of fiber, Fiber, a bunch of superfoods, it's gluten-free, vegan, GMO-free. It's just a really awesome thing that you can have, especially if you're a person who's on the go. It comes in these bottles that have powder in them so you can fill them with water. They're great if you have to go on planes and that kind of thing so you don't get hit with taking liquids on the plane. And like I said, I've been drinking these for about a month now and it's such an awesome product, really great people. There's gonna be a link in the description if you wanna go check it out. If you've ever been interested in having a meal replacement, I definitely suggest this. And a huge thank you to Vital House for sponsoring this video. I guess we better get back to the lens, hey? Let's go see what this thing's capable of. So first thing we need to talk about is the focal length of this lens. The 18 to 105 focal length gives you quite a broad range and makes this a very versatile lens. The full frame equivalent to that is 27 to about 152. So it's got a pretty standard kind of wide end as well as a decent telephoto end. Not super long, but you know, long enough for most cases. At Jawa Her Al Husani, I'm totally sorry if I'm saying that terrible, over on Instagram asked, what kind of shots is it ideal to get? And because of that focal range from 18 all the way up to 105, it could be used for a whole bunch of things. On the wider end, you could do landscape and architecture photography. In the mid range, somewhere in that 50 to 85, you could take some awesome portraits. And on the long end, if you're doing events and that kind of thing, this'll give you the ability to stand back from your subject and kind of be out of the way. Whenever you're talking about zoom lenses like this, especially this one that has such a wide range, you're gonna also get a wide range of ability as far as what you can shoot with it. Another thing that I really love this lens for is vlogging. Because of that 18 millimeter wide end when you're holding it at the end of a Joby Gorilla Pod or whatever you vlog with, it's gonna give you a good surrounding of what's going on as well as being able to get yourself right in the middle of the frame. And as far as that 105 long end, if you're using clear image zoom, so if you're shooting JPEGs or video, it's also really cool because you actually get a two times crop on that as well with very little loss in quality turning this from an 18 to 105 into a 18 to 210 that's a pretty wide range now locus draheim draheim something like that i'm terrible with these names asked would you rather have a zoom lens that covers the whole range or would you rather have a bunch of primes that do the same thing if money was no object hello hi hello. hi 
Now this is the big question between Zooms and Primes. Which one do you want? What's gonna be better for your situation? And this is a really hard question to answer. Technically Primes usually give better quality images, but Zooms are far more versatile. You don't have to carry as many and you can cover a wide range without ever having to take it off the body. So if I really had to pick between one or the other, I would probably go with a Zoom provided that it had the same kind of quality that I expect to get out of my prime lenses. Does that zoom exist? I don't know. Now, talking about the build quality of this, it's made of mostly metal. It's got a separate zoom ring and focus ring. So you've got the two separate rings on there, which is kind of cool. It doesn't... You crazy squirrel. It feels good, especially paired up with the A6000, 6300, and 6500. As far as the size of it, it's almost perfectly the same size as a pop can, or soda pop can, or soda can, or whatever you call it. It's not a super light lens, but it's definitely heavier than something like the kit lens that comes with these cameras. One of my favorite things about the build of this lens is that the zooming is all done internally, so the lens doesn't extend at all when you're zooming. This makes this lens really great for gimbal and stabilizers because you won't have to keep rebalancing if you're changing your focal length. Now one of the things that's really great about this lens is that unlike a lot of zoom lenses it has a constant aperture. Now the aperture is only f4 so you're not going to get the same low light capabilities and you're also not going to be able to do the same kind of crazy shallow depth of field that you would on some of those other lenses but it's still pretty darn good. f4 lets in quite a bit of light and the fact that it's constant throughout your zoom range means that it's really good for video work. For example, if you want to zoom during a shot, you don't want it to be changing apertures as you zoom because it's going to change how much light is coming into the lens and it's also going to be changing your depth of field. I found in most situations f4 let in enough light especially with the new sensor technology that allows you to bump up the ISO with very little noise involved. Now at that Adams asked on Instagram what the best settings are for street photography at night with this lens. Again that comes back to that f4 aperture. It's a little tough to get low light shots and not introduce a whole bunch of grain. Keep it on that aperture of f4 to let in as much light as possible. Bump up your ISO only as far as you have to go and if you can introduce some of your own light or just try and be smart about your light. Now other than how much light an f4 lens will let in the other thing is the depth of field. Nowadays it seems like everybody wants that 1.8 1.4 super shallow depth of field and this especially at the wide end is just not going to give that to you. Now that being said, if you zoom in, if you're using it from let's say 50, 85, or even all the way in at 105, you're gonna get a nice creamy bokeh in the background. This thing does a great job. The aperture blades give you a nice rounded bokeh balls in the background. And so it can still be really useful for those shallow depth of field shots. Now, a couple of you guys over on Instagram had to ask, of course, is it sharp? And one person said, if it's not, is it noticeable? I like this question because it's not the sharpest lens out there and this is again something that you trade off of when you get a zoom lens versus a prime lens. Zoom lenses are harder to make super sharp and super high quality. That being said I have never had any problem with the sharpness of this lens. If you're posting photos on Instagram you're not going to have any problem with this where most people are looking at it on a mobile that's a super small screen size. The sharpness is just fine. The quality and the colors that come out of this thing are super nice. Definitely can't complain about that. Like I said it's not as sharp as something like my Sigma 30 millimeter, but it definitely gets the job done. And in a real world situation where someone's not gonna be zooming in and pixel peeping, you're not even gonna notice the difference. Now Nico Spangle asked if this was a good upgrade from the 16 to 50 kit lens. And NYC Pictures asked if them getting the 16 to 50 and the 55 to 210 was the right choice or if they should have just went with this. Now, as far as it being an upgrade from the kit lens, I do highly suggest it. That's what I did. I had the kit lens and I was using that for a while and then I upgraded to this. I got a lot more range and I got a higher quality image out of it. Not to mention, like I said before, that constant f4 aperture is awesome, whereas the kit lens is a 3.5 to 6.3, I think. So if you're using it for video, as you zoom in, you're going to have that problem of the light going down. 
Now, as far as getting those two kit lenses, the 16 to 50 and the 55 to 210 versus getting this, there is something there as far as having the 55 to 210. Sometimes I do catch myself missing the extra range of having all the way up to 200. There is an 18 to 200 out there, but again, it's that 3.5 to 6.3 aperture that I wasn't into. I really wanted something with a constant aperture considering how much video work I do. Now, that being said, I don't know if you made the right choice or the wrong choice necessarily. It's good to have all of your ranges covered for any situation that you might be in, and those lenses are going to do a fine job of that. This is a bit more expensive than those, and so maybe that was just something that you can do to tide you over until you can afford something more like this. And speaking of expensive lenses, this thing's about $750 Canadian, which is about $600 American. I think it's even on sale right now. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in buying it. Go click that link. It helps me out and doesn't cost you any extra. It's not a super expensive lens, but it's definitely not cheap either. Julie V. Wanner and a couple of you guys actually asked if I thought that this lens was worth the price tag. Now, when I first bought this lens, I thought that it was a really expensive lens too, because all the other lenses that I've been looking at were two or $300 they were fairly inexpensive lenses. Now that I've been kind of diving more into the world of lenses and I understand what's truly out there, I realize that this is actually probably on the inexpensive side when it comes to what's available to you. The 70 to 200, you're looking at a couple of grand for something like that. Whereas this guy, again, that kind of $750 Canadian, $600 American, it's a, you know, reasonably inexpensive lens, especially considering the wide range of focal lengths that you're covering. Now, Julie also asked if I thought that this was a must have for APS-C sensors, and I think so. This is the one, like I said, that I recommend if I could only have one lens. So I think everybody should definitely be at least considering having a good zoom lens like this one in their arsenal. Now, one of the cool things about this lens as well is that it's got optical steady shot built into it. So inside the lens, it's going to be stabilizing your footage. Or if you're someone who shoots photos, it's going to allow you to slow down your shutter speed without getting the hand jitters in there. You'll be able to get crispier looking shots and not blur out your photos because your hands are moving. It also makes this a great lens for vlogging, like I mentioned before, because you can hold it at the end of a Joby Gorilla Pod and point it at yourself and while you're walking and those kinds of things, especially for those people who are on the 6300, 6000, 5100, and 5000, the cameras that don't have the in-body built-in stabilization. So then the question comes, what can you use this lens for? It's something that I always end my lens reviews with. Now this lens in particular being a zoom lens and being a zoom lens with such a wide range, there are so many things that you can use this for. But what I highly suggest it for and what I use it for is less of a specific photography or videography style and more of a situational thing. Anytime that I'm going out and I need to shoot, but I don't know exactly what kind of situation I'm getting into. For example, if my wife and I are going out and I think I might want to get some shots, but I'm not quite sure what the situation is as far as like where I'll be shooting or how long of a lens I'm going to need, I throw this on the camera and it covers me most of the time. Or if I'm shooting an event or something where I need to be quick on my feet to get the shot, and sometimes I might need a wide lens and sometimes I might need a telephoto lens, this is great because I have both of them right at my fingertips. So that's why I would say that if I had to pick any one lens to keep on my camera and that was the only lens I was allowed to have, I would say that the 18-105 to 105 would be my go-to. Again, I really wish that it had better than an f4 aperture, but again that's going to cost you an arm and a leg and it would probably make the thing a whole lot bigger as well. But I really want to turn it over to you guys. If you could only have one lens and it had to stay on your camera all the time, what lens would it be? Would it be the 18-105 to 105 or do you have another favorite? Let me know if you have any more questions that I didn't answer in this video about this lens. I love chatting with you guys. I love trying to answer your questions. Make sure to hit me up on Instagram if you want to ask questions for future videos. My handle is at it. If you want to be friends, click the little circle. You can subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. If you want to watch another video, there's one right here. I think you'll really like it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.